Home Assistant has so many different and powerful options for automations that sometimes it can be difficult to know where to start or even what to do. So today I wanted to show you six automation ideas that I use in my smart home to save me time and to help me remember. Automation number one is actually a fairly recent addition to my smart home in the last sort of couple of months and I'm not sure why I didn't think to do it sooner since it is so simple and that is to do with my robot vacuum. Whenever both of us leave the house for the day for longer than five minutes, Home Assistant will send a notification straight to our phones to ask if we want to start a cleaning cycle. And when we hit yes to that notification, it will start up the robot vacuum. To do this, I use an Ecovax DBot X1 Omni and a really excellent community-made integration that you can find through Hacks for DBot that has a lot of features, sensors, and controls to play with. And I also use a combination of the GPS tracking through the Home Assistant app on our phones, along with the Unify integration to check our phone's Wi-Fi and make sure that we are definitely not at home. When the automation runs, however, I also need to temporarily disable the house alarm just before the vacuum starts up so that it doesn't constantly trip the house alarm and start the siren. And then when the vacuum is finished and returns to the dock, I can simply re-enable the house alarm once again. I do both the initial notification and the start vacuum action in a single automation using the choose action and then I rearm the alarm in another secondary automation. It probably would be possible to have it all done in one single automation, but the rearming of the alarm is so simple that I just added a quick second automation to handle it. But because we are also both home so much these days, sometimes we aren't both out of the house for quite a while, so I also added a quick check to the automation to see if the robot vacuum has been ran within the last two days, and if it hasn't, then also send the notification to start the vacuum. The combination of both of these makes sure that the floor is always nice and clean. The next automation is also a new addition, and that's thanks in part to the excellent new local calendar integration that was added to Home Assistant a couple of releases back. And that is notifying and reading out upcoming events on our speakers, my phone, and my computer. So for example, thanks to the new local calendar integration, I can add events to it such as my bin day schedule, upcoming meetings and appointments, which is really great. But I'm pretty forgetful, so I also added an automation that is triggered an hour before an event is coming up using the calendar trigger. And then in the action, I pretty much spam all of my devices with a notification that lets me know not only that I have an event coming up, but also reads out the title of that event, depending on which devices I am actually using. So if I am at home, then I have the notification read out on my Google Home speakers and a notification sent to my phone. If I'm away from home, then I just get the notification to my phone. And if I'm sat at my computer in the office and my computer is actively being used, then I get a notification sent to my desktop too. The desktop ones are all done using the excellent has.agent, which I've covered in a video in the past and works extremely well and it provides a last active sensor. So I check if the computer was active in the last five minutes, and if it was, I send the notification. This is a really great way of making sure that I don't miss any important events and can be used for a ton of different things, with the best part is, is that it's all done locally. Thank you to NordPass for sponsoring this video. As we know, cybersecurity is an absolute must have in this day and age, and one of the many steps to take in safety measures is having a good, strong, and especially unique password, making sure you aren't using the same password for every website. NordPass is an easy to use service for securely storing and generating unique passwords for all of the websites and apps you use, taking all of the guesswork out of trying to remember tens or even hundreds of different email addresses and passwords. It's available on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, as well as Android and iOS, and all of your passwords are auto-magically synced across all of your devices. NordPass has many impressive features, including a data breach scanner, password health report, web vault, and a password inheritance option. You can choose between a personal plan for you and your family, or a business plan for you, your company or organization, where you can share whatever you need immediately, and more importantly, securely. 
whether that be passwords, secure notes, or payment information. Get two years of NordPass with a one month free for a personal account at nordpass.com slash everything smart home or use code everything smart home at checkout and business accounts can register with a .biz domain and get a free three month trial of NordPass with code smart home. Check out the links down below. Another really useful automation is an alert for low batteries for Zigbee, Z-Wave or Bluetooth sensors. Now I've had something like this for a while but back when we did the Christmas special with all of the other creators, Aaron actually reminded me that what I had wasn't working all that well and it was causing me to ignore the alerts because I couldn't really see what was going on. So I switched over from the template I had over to this blueprint from Gus on the Home Assistant form, which works really well and gives everything nicely formatted along with the battery percentages, which I really like. Implementing it is also a breeze too because it is a blueprint and you can tweak some of the parameters like how often to run, sensors to include and actions to take if a sensor is detected as low. In this case, I like to just do a phone notification so that I have an actual physical list of the ones I need to change rather than trying to mem remember what my speaker said. This is a really simple but powerful automation that everyone who has battery devices should have and will definitely come in clutch and save you from scratching your head, wondering why your motion lights didn't work like they should have. The fourth automation is a really useful one when it comes to house security when you go on holiday or vacation. And it comes from a really cool community made integration called Presence Simulation. What this integration does is allow you to simulate lights turning on and off in your house when you are away for any period of time to make it seem like you are actually at home. The automation for this isn't difficult at all because all of the difficult stuff is handled for you in the integration. Basically what the present simulation integration does is it looks at the history and the state of your lights and light switches seven days ago and then applies a similar pattern to your house as it is now to replicate a normal day's schedule that you had a week ago. A simple yet effective solution. You can tweak quite a few of the parameters, such as how many days ago to actually use and a random offset to apply to the lights so that it's not perfectly on the same schedule and you can vary things a little to seem more natural. Then the whole thing is controlled by a single switch that you turn on and off to enable the present simulation. In my automation, all I need to do is check if the house has been empty for say, longer than 24 hours. And if it has, then enable the simulation and then once I return home, we can disable it again for the next time. This is a really nice feature to have and could just add a nice additional layer of security when it comes to protecting your property when you are away on vacation. I don't know why I said vacation, because I'm British. Next, I have a super simple automation that I'm sure lots of you are already doing, but I've realized I've never really talked about before. And that is an automated extractor fan for the bathroom when the shower is on and the humidity is high. This is done by using a simple contact sensor like this one from Akara, a humidity sensor and a smart switch or relay like a Shelly or Sonoff. Though equally you could use a SwitchBot bot if you aren't comfortable or you can't tamper with your switches. What kicks the automation off is when the humidity sensor goes above 75% then start the extraction fan to try and bring down the humidity. Then when the bathroom door is opened again and the shower is finished, a second automation will trigger when the fan has been running for 90 minutes after the door was opened or when the humidity goes down below 70%, whichever comes first. This has been working really well for my house and saves humidity from really building up if we forget to turn on the fan before getting in the shower and is a simple one that anyone should be able to do, would definitely recommend. Finally, I'm gonna have to come clean. This next one is basically to stop my serious addiction. You see, I have an extremely serious problem, one I can't stop, and I knew that I had to stage an intervention against myself. See, quite often I'm really guilty for having a lot of work to do, but somehow managing to get myself extremely deep into a rabbit hole, one I sometimes don't come out of for hours and hours, and that is a rabbit hole called YouTube. 
To stop myself from watching videos on YouTube for five minutes, except it's not five minutes, it's two hours, I created an automation that runs on a scheduled helper that is basically set for my work times. And when run, it will talk to my AdGuard server to automatically disable YouTube from working, resulting in no videos being able to load and thus bringing me back into the present day. Then when the workday is over again, it re-enables YouTube again seamlessly so that I can continue watching videos. It's really simple to do and it works very well. And another way that I could do this is probably to use OpenSense and use the OpenSense integration instead, which would have the benefit of only targeting certain devices that are my devices so that it still works for Sarah but I'm sure she won't mind. Look, if I have to suffer, I think it's only fair that she does too. So there we go, that is six automation ideas that you can do in your smart home. And you will notice that there was definitely a theme throughout this video, that most of these are heavily geared towards helping me to remember to do things since I have a terrible memory. But all of these automations should be accessible no matter the hardware you have since it's all pretty much standard stuff except maybe the robot vacuums since those can be quite expensive but the others you should be able to do with the smart home devices you already have which is the best kind of automation isn't it let me know down in the comments if you have any further automation ideas you want to share with me and share with the community I'm always looking for new things to add and do and to be interested to hear what you guys have to say as always. And other than that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video.